Hi, I'm Jonathan Hoagland. I'll be going over the drive support tool software and how to tune a servo motor. I have a PM FDL 02 motor, which is a 60 millimeter two stack 200 watt servo motor connected to a 404 20 millimeter pitch ball screw with a 29 pound load connected to the carriage. I'll be going over how to tune that. First, I want to go into uh, the manual jog, which is a speed mode, uh, and just to establish where my zero position is. So first thing I need to do is connect. I'm using an EtherCAT drive. This procedure will be valid for any of the P-series drives. You'll notice the uh, status bar on the bottom is USB connected and it's flashing, indicating that you are actually online with the drive. Enable the drive. I'm going to establish the zero position first. The P-series motors have a high resolution absolute encoder. The uh, 60 and the 80 millimeter frame size have a 19 bit resolution encoder, which is uh, 524, 288 counts per revolution. The 40 millimeter, which is a PMFAL, is a 18 bit, which is uh, half of that. So it's 262, 144 counts per revolution. So uh, I'm close to my zero position. If I actually want to zero this out, I can go into the point to point move, enable the drive, and then when I click set, you'll see the FP position set to zero because I, on my carriage, I want to make sure I'm at, uh, at the zero position and then I want to move the full way out. If I go back to the jog mode, I can enable it and then jog it out over my travel range. I want to slow that down towing. So let's uh, see I'm at uh, 12 million four hundred thousand counts. So if I go into the point to point move I'm going to start at uh, that position. Now it's uh, 524, 288. So if I do 524, 288, that would be one revolution per second. A fairly long travel. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero on there. So that would be 10 revolutions per second. Now the acceleration is 200,000 counts. So it would take uh, 5 million roughly divided by 200,000, it would take quite some time to actually get up to speed. So I actually, I can just cheat to 524, 288, throw two zeros on the end. So it's gonna take a tenth of a second to get up to that speed. And then if I mouse click off of that, it stays red. Just make sure that you press enter on the keyboard that way the valid takes. If not, it would be the old value. The stop deceleration is used when you actually click the stop button. So if you're in the middle of a move and you click stop, it will use this stop deceleration ramp. Okay, so, and then I don't want to do a relative move on a, a positioner like this. I want to move back and forth in between those two absolute positions and, um, move between 12,400,000 and zero. And I'm going to wait until I settle. Let's, uh, because it's such a high resolution absolute encoder and we haven't tuned it yet, I'm gonna open up that position window. This is the position window that it needs to settle in within before it actually reverses. So if I go ahead and test this, So it looks pretty smooth and let's uh, graph this. So if we go into the oscilloscope, you can see I already have this up. We have the velocity feedback, the torque feedback percentage, which is a percentage of how much the motor that we're using. We want to look at the um, tracking error. 
following error actual value. And this gives us a three channel scope. It auto scales once we start and then we can start to start the graphing. And then because these auto scale, it's a very narrow band for the torque feedback. But once I start running it, you can see it scales up and so it looks that's a much wider range in the view. Okay, so it's moving back and forth. From the perceptible eye, it looks pretty good. But if we look at the following error, we can stop the graph from running. I'll just stop the motor from right here. We can mouse over and we can say, see it's 104,000 counts. So that's about one fifth of a revolution, um, which is fairly gross. Um, the drive support tool software has a really nice graphing capability and you can go to single grid to overlap or keep them as uh, individual graphs. You can change the uh, colors as well too, pardon me, the velocity feedback is in red and on a video that may be hard to read, but I can go ahead and change that dynamically. I don't have to recapture that data. Um, so first thing I would do to stiffen that up, if I go into the gain window, take the velocity feed forward gain and unfortunately the default is 0%. So let's go ahead and set that to 100%. I'm going to start my graph again. So now you can see while we're dynamically moving It's around 15,000 counts when we start to accelerate, and that's normal, but then we settle into position. It, you see a little bit of ripple here, so how can we better improve that? I'm going to stop it in the middle of the travel. If we go into the tuning, the rigidity is a relative number. If we increase this, and typically what I want to do is increase it, put the actuator in the middle of the travel, and it moves the motor three pulses, and it's trying to detect how much inertia is connected to the motor. So it will automatically adjust the tuning gains based on that. So we've increased the rigidity to 10. Now if I want to go back to the point-to-point -point move, select the reverse and repeat, re-enable the drive, start the motion. The high audible squeal is obviously the motor being unstable. So from here, want to take the rigidity and dial it down two notches down to eight. Redo the tuning. and then go back into the point to point move, reverse and repeat, enable the drive, and then move again. Now you can see when we're moving, when we start to accelerate, there's only 1800 counts, and then it quickly settles into position within uh, plus or minus 100 counts, and it's a 19-bit resolution. So 0.02% position error that we're settling in. You can uh, turn off the other channels while they're running, or you can turn them back on. 
Again, the auto scale is really nice with an oscilloscope. Uh, it automatically sets your time base and your uh, vertical divisions based on the data that's coming back. Um, if you want to stop, you can save this as a picture or you can save it as a comma separated value and then import that into Excel to, to graph further if you want to do uh, math analysis on that. So in summary, the default tuning gains will work nine times out of 10. If you want to dial it in, go into the gain, set the feed forward to 100%, then do the auto tuning, increase that up until you start to see a squeal, um, back it off a couple notches, and then, oh, need to make sure we save this. Save to memory. Do not click that OK button, let that window close automatically and then do you will have to uh, do a, a software reset if it's enabled you need to disable first on the indexer drive on the digital inputs you may have a SV on set for the indexer drive you can click that off here to force that off this is uh, POT is a uh, positive end of travel but um, and then you can do a s software reset you'll lose the connection and then it will come back online I think with the video capture it prevents it from automatically going back online and then we're good and then if you want to create a backup copy of this to duplicate into another drive, I know I've covered this in another video, but if we go into the object dictionary, you can uh, show motor database. The P-series motors are already uh, detected on the P-series drives. This would only be needed if you had a, um, like a BE or an MPP or an SM series motor, Neometric J series or a, or a linear motor as well too. The show motor database will include the motor information and then if you want to save to file name that anything that you want and then when you connect to the drive then you would load from file. Okay. And then uh, after that's loaded then save to memory and then reset and that will actually include all the information if you open that up in notepad you can see all the parameters and all the objects any questions feel free to email us at emn underscore support at parker.com thanks and have a great day